Ready in 5, 4, 3, 2... Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at podcast! With Christina P. This week, I'm in Addison, Texas, at the Improv, February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, 4th, and then Portland, Oregon, Revolution Hall. I added a show on March 31st, April 1st. That one's already gone, Roner Park. Chicago, one night only, April 29th. Tickets are almost gone for that. And then Milwaukee, Milk Jockey, Wisconsin at Turner Hall. That was good. Thank you. April 30th and then May 13th, Charlestown, West Virginia at the Hall. It's Hollywood in West Virginia. <laughs> ChristinaPOnline.com. Thank you to everybody that's purchased my lipstick. Christina P's Perfect Red. I cannot um, explain how stoked I am that you guys love it as much as I do. It's just been amazing. We're sold out again and again and again, and we're working to fix this problem. But we do get the product from Italy, which is why it's such a fucking ordeal. It's special. The same. And I literally, listen, that cap that we designed, it's a snap cap so that it doesn't open and ruin your bag. I just looked today in my beautiful handbag, and lo and behold, another brand of lipstick all up. I should put what? my lipstick in here. Dr. Drew, what do you have? <laughs> I, I brought my purse with me. To prove you I'm the gayest straight man in America. No, no, this is, this is, uh, you'll be shocked to know. First of all, it's not leopard, it's cheetah. Oh, right. Yeah. I always get that and, mixed uh, up. It's Susan's earpieces and things in here. She left it behind. So, oh, I thought so. you really were I, embracing. I, I, but I don't mind carrying it, clutching it. I guess clutch. you call this a clutch, That's right? A clutch. It's a clutch. <laughs> Guys, everybody, Dr. Drew is here. Hello. You know who the fuck he is. All meow all the time. All meow, meow. meow. <laughs> Meow, meow, meow. Dr. Drew, After Dark, and like a million other shows that you do. A million do. other things. But I was just thinking about the Hollywood Casino. Do you know I've been there? What? Yeah, because really? that's where Tim Pool's podcast is on the heels of that. And they go, you want to go out and gamble afterwards? I went, all right. Yeah. And there was a floor-to-ceiling picture of Nick Swartzen, Aww. who I hadn't seen in years. Went out to dinner next Friday, sat down next to him. Oh my gosh. It was so weird. How bizarre. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Anyway, yeah, just thought I'd share that. That's... But you'll like the Hollywood Casino. It's nice. Okay. Well, I'm I'm super pumped. There's a racetrack there. A horse racetrack. In the casino? No, right next to it. It's the craziest thing ever. So anyway. It's so funny. Yeah. There's always like, there's this one comedy club in Peoria, the Jukebox Comedy Club. And there's a race car track across the street. <laughs> and by, by your late show Friday, you can hear it revving up. So you'll be telling your jokes, and it's like, <laughs> row, row, like just during the silence. It just speaks volumes about the history of your profession. <laughs> <laughs> no respect, I tell you. No respect. This, and I was watching the Tony Hawk documentary mm -hmm. um, that's on HBO right now. If you guys are interested in skateboarding, you got to see this documentary about Tony Hawk. Tony's just an interesting, great guy. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Would well, you know him? Have you met I, him? Oh, many, many times. Yeah. I mean, like this is it. Until the wheels fall off. If You guys know I love skateboarding, but I love it so much because I think there's so many parallels between stand-up comedy and skateboarding. Uh, although we don't end up in the hospital <laughs> if we mess up, but we um, it's painful. It's psychically painful. And this Tony Hawk, I, I didn't even realize that when he's like 12 years old, he's in a contest against Caballero, who's like the big guy. Or No, no, it was uh, Josoy. And... They're fucking booing him when he's 12 years old because they're on Christian Hosoy's side because right, it's like very course. polarizing. Yes. Like, that guy sucks. That guy. Yeah. And you know what he does? He's fucking 12. He just bears down and just grit, dude. Like straight up grit and moxie. He wins and he crushes Christian Hosoy. And mm -hmm. it's like, he's 12 and he does that. Yeah. It's just like, what, is, what a unique personality that, oh, and his home life is, you know, was relatively okay compared to other skateboarders, but you know, there's always He's bullshit. He's the nicest guy in the world. I know. You know, he has no like attitude or anything. I know. So, so humble. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, yep. oh my God, do you know who you are? Yeah. <laughs> you're Tony Hawk, dude. <laughs> but what separates the Tony Hawks from the people who like don't us? cut the mustard? <laughs> yeah. Like, but how do how does one what is that? What is I the don't Tony know. Hawk? Yeah, I, I want to believe that anybody has potential. If they just find that way to dig and work. I mean I, do you know I was out in the desert recently? Did you see the show? I Did saw you, a pre, I saw a trailer for yeah, it. I, I, Can I we pull we, this up? 
it's special forces. Their trailers oh all over the place. Oh my god! So I ended up in the ICU. I can tell my story now. I ended up in the ICU that night what? from heat stroke and dehydration, and so I I couldn't walk oh. till I had five liters of IV fluid. It was crazy. Why were you not drinking your water? Because they had us. They were beating the shit out of us, and they had a thing where here is is this the trailer? Oh my goodness! I, th- here, you they had us die. dive out backwards out of a helicopter. Here what he says, if you should die, nature's way of saying you failed. And that's Jamie Lynn Spears doing her thing. We all jumped out of the helicopter like that. 125 degrees in our little tents out there in the middle of the desert. Uh, it was crazy. This is all the group I was out there with. Oh, my God. Oh, Kate Gosselin's in it. Yeah, Kate's in it. Mel B. There she is. Oh, she's cool. She was fun, Carly Lloyd. This is crazy, crazy. you Hannah, guys. Yeah. And so the, if you guys are just listening, this like they're running, they've got bags over their heads, they're running with rucksacks, which probably weigh like 100 35 pounds. pounds. Yeah. 35 pounds, tear gas. <laughs> they're getting tear gas. Yep. I hear you have to learn how to do that. Yep. You just puke in your gas mask. That's it. <laughs> That's yeah. it, you learned. No, I've talked to, because when I've done military gigs, I always ask about oh, yeah, it's these crazy. kind of things. They, so, they beat the shit out of us 24-7. And, and I mean, really, so, really. So you didn't have time to drink your liquid death, well, is what you're I, saying. They, you your had, liquid IV. First of all, the wa- I know. I should, if I had liquid, my wife was yelling about that. Bring the liquid IV. I said, they won't let me bring it in. And so I had no fluid like that. Or they had gave us some tablets and said, save them for you. You'll have to be here for 10 days. Then on the, this, Nastia Lucan was in there. The, um, Ooh, the she does, she's not hot. That's Beverly. That's they Beverly. should really stop and put makeup Kenya on Moore. these chicks. They, you know was, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you're going to be look on TV. Anthony Scaramucci. Look hot. Look right. as hot as you can, ladies. Yeah. Bitches. Wow, yeah. this is wild. Oh, you do. You look yeah. good. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Drew. You look good. Thank you. Thank Even you. in the heat of battle, you look look smoking, bro. I, I had I had a great time. It was a great experience. These are all my dear friends now. So so what's the difference? So uh, tell they me. They blew us up on that train, if you noticed. Yeah, please. And, and, I've got to watch so, this. So what channel is this going to be on Fox? It, it's on Fox. Amazing. At nine o'clock on Wednesdays. Okay, and, so what's the secret? What's the so, sauce? So let me just tell you what happened. Why I got so badly dehydrated. So I was into it. I loved it. I, I was like, this is this is the it's most, I, I was like, this is, no one's ever tempted anything like this. This is unreal. I'm all in. And you had two canteens and the water we had access to fill the canteens was 100 degrees. It was super hot water because mm. there was no anything. That's terrible. And so, so that like, was. Oh, finally, it's hot piss in it, your mouth. Yeah. So part of it was, <laughs> I, there was, it wasn't so great to drink it. But the other thing was, oh. if, your, if your canteens weren't topped off completely at all times, they'd punish the whole group. So, so I was sorry, drinking. Your canteens weren't topped off. Meaning, at all times, what does topped it, off mean like fluid to the top, so, oh. and, uh, which was because I was drinking a lot. Never the case. And so when they go, you need water. I go, nope, nope, because they didn't want them to punish everybody. Oh my and God. so I got way behind. Way That's behind. psychotic. It, it, the whole thing is psychotic, but it's so fun. It's the so water cool. Dep- why the water deprivation to it, teach it, it, you to ration it? it? I, I think my age, I needed a lot more water than yeah. everybody else, and so you know. It, I just it, if I were to do it again, I would have a whole different <laughs> plan. I, yeah. I did great on the cardiovascular and everything I had yeah. to do in the task and the I and a lot of it was in the water and I'm great in the water, so it was fun. Yeah. Anyway, well just you're very watch it, fit. See. Like you're you take really good care of yourself. I, I'm about as good as you can be for my age, but I am still my age. Right. And so I mean think about it. If I were seventy five, you think that heat would have lasted, you know, would have had trouble in a few hours of that heat? Right. Yes. Well, it's 63. It's, you know, it's similar. Well, it's a mental. I mean, this it, it this, was physical. It was not mental. I was all physical. in yeah, mental. Yeah, yeah. It was just all of a sudden but, I was sick and then I was like really sick, like within a couple hours. What is, well, how does it feel to be dehydrated? So people listening it, know, because I don't even know. Well, we was so. I drink so much water, I wouldn't know. Me, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, me too. I, I, uh, <sighs> I, I have like dry water mouth chip. all the time. I drink water all the time. I was not aware of being behind. Yeah, you, you were. It was so hot and so crazy and so preoccupied with all the things they were having us do. Right. I never had a sense that anything was wrong until all of a sudden I had severe headache and nausea, like severe. Ooh. And then I got confused. Like I started, I Whoa. lost it. I was just gone. Gonzo. So That's scary. And then I was hauled off by an ambulance through the sand. Dude. Oh my so, God. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that... Um, just not drinking water can wreck the human body. Like that's it. Well, it, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to people like, oh, if I don't eat, I'm going to pass out. Yeah. You can go a couple of weeks without eating. Yes, you can't go two days. You can't go a few you hours in that, yeah. that environment without drinking a lot of water. Yeah. So water, water, mm-hmm. so important. Mm-hmm. I'm um, so I want to have my liquid death. Yeah, yeah, you have to drink your liquid death. Um, you put your liquid IV in your liquid death. <laughs> You cook your Hello hey, Fresh if, and I you sleep on your side of a mattress. God damn it! If they asked me to go back in, I would not go back in without liquid IV. I swear to Christ. Yeah. 
So anyway, it was a fun experience. Met a lot of good new friends. All those guys were all bonded by trauma and pain. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I think everybody's secret. I mean, the cool people are. The best people are. Are bonded by trauma and pain? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think this this staff is, these warriors? Well, comedians generally, comedians as you and I have are. discussed. Yeah. yeah, we love that. But it, okay, so in that Tony Hawk documentary, what I love is that he's his thing is always getting to the trick. He's always trying to learn the next trick. Yes. And you know how much determination it takes to be like, I'm going to get up and do a McTwist or whatever yes. the fuck it is. And you get up and I'm going to do that and I'm going to fucking land it. Yes. And then you fall. And then you fall. And then you fall. And, and then he, you break your arm and, and then, then you, you fall. Break, yo. Yeah. But for this this guy to be like, in his whole, he says in the documentary, if I think I'm going to fail, I will fail. I have to believe that I can do it. And it's so simple. And it's, I, it's like, duh, no yeah. shit. Yeah. In anything in life, same with stand-up comedy or physical fitness, even being in the shape that you're in, mm. Dr. Drew, which mm. I'm sure now it's like second nature for you to just exercise. Yeah. It's Tom getting of, that way now. Notice he's all into it. He is so jacked. But is he I, is I he call is him it? David Goggins now because it's he's a psychotic. Yeah. But is he is now a way of life for him? Yes. Yeah, good. It's second nature. Yeah, and yeah. if he doesn't do it, he feels bad. Right. That's how I am. Right. So yeah. how did you start getting into Oh uh God, it started when I was like 14. Really? And, and I was originally, I was like trying to get in shape for football. And I just, I, and I ended up working out, this is an interesting story. I worked out, Pasadena had a gym with a guy, run. it was called Bill Pearl's Gym. Bill Pearl is this, he invented bodybuilding essentially. He's no the first way. Mr. Universe, Mr. Look Olympics. Look this guy up, I want to Bill Pearl, he's from the 50s and 60s. Pasadena. And, uh, and so all these guys from the 70s, Used to work out there. The, all the all the big, you know. Uh, oh, look at this guy. Yeah, he invented this. Look at these thing. motherfuckers. Yeah. I love these dudes. These and, old schools. And he taught me how to train, and I was around there for a long time. I just kind of got into it, and then it just stayed with me. Look now I have a g- garage that's filled what, with weights and stuff. That's what Doctor Drew looks like with his shirt on. That's me. You don't that's know me. this, but and I had s- a little bit of anadrol. <laughs> 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 when we saw you at the montage when Tom and I just got married in 08, a friend, um, what's his name, gave us a a gift to go there for a couple Uh, of nights. Um, I remember the comedian's name, very generous. And we saw you at the pool with your kids. And I remember Tom and I were like, oh my God, that's Dr. Drew, holy shit. And then you took your shirt off. We were like, oh my fucking God. That was a long time ago. Jay Moore, Jay Moore, thank you for buying us. Long time ago. That was pretty exciting. Jay's going to marry Jeannie Mutt. I uh, heard. uh, The Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats, bro. Yeah. Good. Good fucking... Fine, homie. Yeah, Jay's a great guy. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, okay, so I invited you here today because Could my because I lo- a I love you. Oh, good. And I we we talked last time we were together. There was a clip. If we could just play it to it refresh. Really drives my bad when he has a pity party and doesn't think anybody likes him. He's not smart enough. He's not funny. Drives up my bad. Well, Sarah, What's thank that? you for being so supportive. <laughs> Men love that when you're supportive. When we need you. When we're feeling vulnerable. When we're needing that support, especially from our spouse, yeah. it just really warms my heart to know that, <laughs> that you're worried about your vaginal moisture when we yeah. really need that emotional support. Yeah, he's Thank like, you. I'm not feeling like I'm like I'm valuable. I'm not feeling like I'm good enough. And she's like, ugh, my pussy's so dry. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so this clip, I mean, it took off like wildfire on Instagram. And every day, even now, when I post this a couple, it's almost to 2 million um, views. And people are, the men are just so, it really touched a nerve in, in men. It rings true, first of all. That's yeah. why it's getting such traction. It rings true for men that men have been shit on for the last 15 years. They, they want to do good. They want to be appreciated. They want to know what how, how to make women happy, amongst other things. And we're being told we're not worthwhile, we're toxic masculinity, we, everything we do is somehow problematic and we need to be more in, or more emotional and more like women. And so when we do that, look what happens. Mm. Look what happens. We become unattractive by being that way. I... I, I I started fishing around on the internet today mm. about this, and I sent myself an email of something somebody sent. Uh, let me see. Six ways men can become emasculation for proof. Emasculation so, for proof. So do not be proof. emasculated. Ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're feeling uh, you know, emasculated by these sorts of, you know, when you say, I, I, I'm going to be vulnerable and honest with you, and you say, oh, fuck, you're such a pussy. Mm. You, my vag is dried. I'm going to go screw the guy next door. It's mm. like it, men get 
we get really injured by that stuff. That is not okay. Uh, here are the ways to be emasculation proof. Okay, you ready? Emasculation proof. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, always treat women with respect. <laughs> okay. Uh, number two, if your wife or girlfriend says something with which you disagree or you don't want to do, say so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have as much say in so-called women's issues as women do. Okay. I want to tell this writer to shut the fuck <laughs> up. Breaking news. Our friends at Manscaped are now selling beard products just in time for Valentine's Day. That's right. The leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming are once again revolutionizing the men's hygiene game with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to all your stubble trouble and tame his mane this Valentine's Day. Save 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using code WMMA. Listen, my husband loves the Beard Hedger Pro because he has a huge unruly beard and who better to trust than the Manscaped people? They do everything right. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the ultimate Valentine's gift because you also will be happy with this gift. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel with 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard, so no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. You hear that, ladies? No more messy drawers. The kit also includes a titanium-coated tea blade, beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and three free gifts. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code WMMA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code WMMA. Manscaped Beard Hedger. One stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Recognize that your desire to prove you're a new age man will, un will likely undermine your needs as a man. Don't be overly accommodating and wind up frustrated. You will almost certainly lash out in other ways from stifling your true self. I don't, I don't even self. like understand. Learn to say no to women. I don't understand this. Like, Retain do you understand? your male friends. It's, it's just, it's written by a woman. And uh. she doesn't understand what men are experiencing right now. She just does not get it. And men are feeling. Um, men want to do what's right, and we want and we want to protect, and we want to be. Yeah, I think it's desired, rooted in a good thing. All good things. Yeah. And, and but we want to be valued and appreciated more than anything else. And if you tell us to be valued and appreciated, we need to be more open and vulnerable, and yeah. try to try to tell you know do like this guy with that dry the vag up you know talk about how you're feeling and your your insecurities. Nope. Turns out you can't be appreciated if you do that. Your women are not. Women in. won't want to bang you, and that's the whole point. And men experience being loved and wanted and valued through sex. Yes, through physical. Yeah, through touch. And it, it's true, sex. though. Through sex. through sex. But it is true because when you think about it, the sex act for a woman, it's it really puts us in the most vulnerable of mm -hmm. positions. Mm -hmm. Like I can get pregnant. By doing that, yeah, biologically, like that should be your most kept, yeah, thing. Yes, <laughs> yes, it isn't now culturally, but, no, but generally, but, they're still you're wired up for that. You're yeah. Still, yeah, and so we, I we, understand. So, so let's read the comments because I, I, I now I'm understanding. Could highlight what you just did. You, you, this one was interesting. Never ever be quote vulnerable near a woman. It will be used against you. That is what one man said, John John Julian but, but that may or may not be true, but just how about the fact that somebody's made him feel that way? This is why men don't open up. It's met with criticism and insults, so we just keep it inside. So they pile on. I mean, what, what happens when your female friends start to get on a pity pot? How do women respond to that? Oh, it's like that's fuel for awesome time. I personally don't. Is it you're great, you're wonderful, you're beautiful? Is it a lot of feedback that way? Or do, or do you then turn around and go, God, that bitch is so, oh, she drives me crazy with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's some both. of that. So yeah. it's both. So you go, <laughs> do you know how awful that is? Yeah. It's both. So you go. Yeah, you're you go, validated for being you're a You're beautiful, whiner. you're wonderful, don't, come on, you're yeah. great. And then you go to the, your real friends yeah. and say, I can't stand the bitch yes. who's tearing, to Just like, tire me out. God, suck it up. Or you, yeah, you talk you, shit so you about. You certainly don't need that from a man. No. Oh, right. And then, and then when your boyfriend does it, you're like. Oh, what the fuck? Like, is he yeah. growing a, a, a badge too? 
I guess. His badge must be dry also. See, but I understand male frustration because it's like biologically for hundreds and thousands of years, you guys. Millions. Have, right. You're wired to be more stoic because you're out fucking hunting and like killing animals. And we literally don't have the same degree of connectivity to the emotional centers in the brain and stuff and, and puberty. Testosterone dampens a lot of that too. It oh, just sensitivity, does. Sensitivity, yes. Yeah, it just yeah. does. I mean, I see it with my husband even when I'll be like, hey, um, do you think you could do X, Y? Like I noticed that maybe we didn't, you didn't, you know, can you do more? Like I can see him get defeated. Like, oh no, I failed. Yeah. I failed somehow. Like I see it defeat him and I'm like, yeah. oh no. Like I didn't mean for that to deflate you. I just was like, we would love to have you do this thing with can, us or whatever. Can, can you be a little more specific? Yeah. Like, oh God, I don't want to throw him under a bus. Yeah. Don't throw him under the bus, but, but, but the more specific you'd be, like, the more. Okay. Like for instance, um, and it's Sunday and generally that's a family day yeah. and maybe he's made plans without saying something yes. in advance. And, and, and probably probably he's heard you say, honey, you need to take care of yourself more. Go hang out with your friend. He's probably of course, heard that too. Mixed messages. And then, and and then, then when yeah. you, you do it, then you're like, oh my God, I can't win. The, the, the I can't yes. win feeling is yes. the worst thing in the world for a man. That's it's what like it is. Powerlessness is not a good feeling. That's what it is. Yeah. The I can't win. Yeah. And I'm like, I know I gave you mixed messages. So like, we don't deal well with that. No. You just give us the message, we go. We, we, <laughs> it's just, I think everything with the male is linear. Linear. I know. Not not whole, not holistic, linear. So you got to so, go A, B, C, D. Well, I've decided I'd just make his calendar for him. Sure. And then be like, look, these are just non-negotiable family things. And then and you do you around family stuff. Because right. I think he's so over inundated with like stuff anyway. It, it is. Look, I look back at my workaholism years <sighs> and I've got... What's the matter? No, now, I'm just saying that because Tom's in it. Fallen, I know. Yeah, because it sucks. So, it's so, so harsh. I have two... Two or three different reactions. One is, oh, I have multiple reactions. One is, I had to do that. Yes. I, it's who you I am. You have to make hay it, to you, it, but it's, it, but it, but I, it is the But it is defining of who I was and am and what I can give back now and things. Yes. And, and, I, and because of it, I had an extraordinary experience that physicians aren't even getting today. You don't even see the broad range of human, human clinical experience that I saw. Uh, number one. Number two... I do not know how my wife put up for it, with it. I do not understand it, but I'm so grateful. Yeah. So you'll, she'll, he'll be grateful. Uh, my kids express resentment to this day. Mm. You weren't there when this happened and that happened. And he'll get that. And that's yeah. something you have to deal with. Um, and, and you do the best you, you can. You work around that. and you say, I was still there plenty. I just wasn't as much as I would like to have been. And yeah. I was working on like, it. But yeah. I, I just think you have to do it when you can. I think so too. It's, and, it's, look, it's a tough, it's a no win, dude. Correct. It's a no win. That's so right. He, you can't get it perfect. You can't get it perfect. Yeah. It's fine. You, you, you yeah. deal There's with it. There's going to be some sacrifice. Of course. Yeah. Um, so these dudes are kind of like. Is there more to read? No, I mean. Because I want to learn more of what This is thinking. the sentiment. Some of them are writing a freaking novel. In That's there. what I'm saying. It was such, here, let's just the long one. Not a joke. Go up. There. Not a joke. A lot of women I've noticed when a man is struggling with something or needs help, women, I can't even, will fucking leave them. Yeah. Happened to me, happened to friends of mine, and it's definitely not a women only issue, but it is largely excused and dismissed. It's disgusting. It's pathetic and it's shameful. I understand now that not every battle is worth fighting or winning. I'm not sure I understand what he means. I, I'm not sure he means, that. but he's saying it happens a lot. It happens to people. And, and particularly during, I, I would argue that, Fuck. you know, it is one thing like me and Susan and you and Tom during these long-term relationships. But when you're in the sort of dating kind of zone, this is kryptonite. Mm. This is how you lose a, a partner. By being vulnerable, the man? What he's telling you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's one thing. Look, it's one thing to be vulnerable. Uh, this is what I think it is. It is one thing to... Be vulnerable and express your feelings, but when you put them on the the woman that's or it. make her feel them or somehow responsible for them, that's it. That is turn tail and run. But I but I would argue with I with both sexes. I think it's it's unattractive in a friendship. It's unattractive in men and women. When somebody you ever meet somebody, their energy just leaks. They're yeah. just like unfit. Oh, oh. Like, oh, yes, fix yes. me, fix no, me. No, that can be a problem. That's Anybody, different. That's a problem. That is different. That's, they, if that's what we're talking about, that's somebody needs therapy and needs maybe yeah. medication too. Yeah. yeah. But we're talking about just you know, I'm insecure. I wonder about myself. I'm worried. Can you help me? Can you? What do you think? How do you think I am? Yeah. Kryptonite. 
kryptonite. Terrible. You know what's so funny is that actually I, Uh-oh, you I like had it? a boyfriend yeah. that was like that and I, it really wrapped me Did up. Did he wear black lipstick? Yes, of course. <laughs> and I really loved his petty party. Yeah, but that's a different I'm thing. so sick. He was a sociopath. Oh, that's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, you okay. like sociopaths. I mean, I was really... It was intriguing because I was like, let me fix you. I mean, granted, I was like 20 years old at the but, time. But, but the, the brooding is different. I than, loved the brooding. Yeah, that's Gosh, different. it that was sexy. <laughs> Shit. That's so gross. It's different. It's different than the, than the yeah. needy. Needy. Needy, needy is, is, but is needy the thing. is unattractive I, in either men and women. It's, it's no, unattractive. Listen, how often do you, as a female, do you say, uh, you just start unloading on Tom and he, he and then he starts giving you solutions and you get angry with him. Just listen well, to me. Just listen. I just need you to listen. I don't That's do that. That's that. Okay, most women do, do I know, that. but I'm also like, I don't know. I'm tr I, I talk to my shrink more about my problems because I've learned that like men aren't great. Like if you want sympathy... Don't talk to your fucking husband, no, bro. Because we go to they don't problem want solve. It. No, yeah. no, no, we yeah, go to, yeah, we go yeah. to, we, why are you talking if like we don't want to solve it? 100%. If you don't want to solve it, why, why are we 100%. having it? 100%. And you want to unload the feelings, and feelings. men do push it back. Men right. do push that so back. So if I want feelings, I go to my good Men can do it. You have to kind of alert us to prepare yourself. Like, like sit and listen and just listen. That's really what you want is us to listen. Yeah, but but you it's like speaking Chinese to someone that doesn't understand We're not Mandarin. Give you much feedback. Yeah, <laughs> so like I'm not going to really do it a whole lot. <laughs> right. I I'll, I'll tell Tom is on a need to know basis. I understand. You know what I'm saying? I, yes, I know. I But I, see, but I think this is because I've been educated in how men are and I think because the culture is so male averse set. right now. That instead they they've trained women how to deal with men for centuries. So now it's it's the opposite, and yeah. we're getting upset. Men That's are right. Getting, yeah, are like what can, the fuck, dude? Can we talk about hormones? Is it appropriate to talk about? Oh that? yeah. Yeah, because uh, Susan, who's on testosterone replacement and has yeah. changed her life, yeah. uh, now goes, oh, I I understand. <laughs> like, oh, that's what you've been dealing with. Oh, I get a little bit now. I kind of get it. Because like, Cause yeah, it puts her brain in somewhat of a different state. Yes, because men are like, it's it's too messy when a woman is like all over the place, right? Emotionally, well, we can, like, hold, we can contain things. We're good at that. We're being a kind of a, a container. But then we, if we're going to spend the time containing it, we want to solve. Yeah. You know? I know. It's just how we're set up. I mean, and not saying that all men are that way. I'm not, we're, no. not gen, we're not saying everybody's anything. That's so the, please, no letters. So, so that, just, that's the other part yeah. to this discussion is yeah. that not all women are like that woman, are like that caller. No. I, I think somebody who's more emotionally immature is going to go like, ew, gross, don't bring me your problems. But if you're in a long-term committed... Long-term relationships are different. It's true. Yeah, you would, different. I welcome the inner Some of that. dialogue. Yeah. I welcome his emotional. But landscape. then again, you don't want to be like carrying him. You don't want to do that. Nobody wants to carry, yeah. and no, another. nor man wants to be in that position either. But but what the reason I reacted the way I did in that in that video also is that when we get to, in a long term relationship, when we get to that point, we need you. Yeah. We really need you, and we'll get through this, but for a moment, we're going to need to be carried for a second. Yes. Uh, and when we get on the other side, we'll happily carry you. But when we're when we're getting into that, an average man who gets into that kind of mode, it's because he's really in trouble. He's, he's really messed yeah. up. And and it's usually, and it's usually, as I think about it, it's usually who he is in the world. Something's gone wrong. Yeah. You know, am I good enough? Am I going to be okay? Am I am I am I going to you know is, is Am I really not good at my whatever? We want to be appreciated. We want to have a place in the world and be able to do things that are worthwhile. And when that gets threatened, we start to really feel bad about ourselves. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. It's and weird. I and I guess women don't know what to do with that. I would argue like then well if this guy is this way. Well, I think sometimes and then when he you switches, I, I, you're like, what are what's going on here? Right. I was gonna say I've noticed that in Susan when I do get to that when I have been in that place, she gets panicky. Right, because you're like, like, you're the strong one, you yeah, can't do this to me. Yes, and which yeah. is not helpful. It <laughs> is just, which is also not helpful. And, but right. I but I get it and it makes us feel worse. Like we're you're right, we're not supposed to be here. And sometimes it snaps us out of it, frankly. Sometimes it gets yeah. us out of it, but sometimes we just need to know that we're okay, that we're good enough. And and it's how it's I think more than anything. Problem solving, you, you could help us problem solving and reality testing. I think mm. where our reality testing is not that good. You know, how, how if something goes wrong, we, we sort of feel not worthwhile very easily, I think. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I get that. It takes a long while to build a male. <laughs> We're very fragile. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing too. I was so, um, I'm so, <sighs> this, I just, you know, whatever and had you me got thinking two of them about to build. this. Yeah, that's the thing is like little boys when they're little, they have feelings. They're not robots. It's mm -hmm. not like these people are just automatons. No, no, they're very sensitive. They're very, they're just as sensitive as yeah. any, any other being. But yeah. like, I see one of my kids, his temperament is more stoic. He'll tend to be like, fine, God. You know? <laughs> and I have to like, just kind of hang back. And when he's ready, he will yeah. talk. And the other one is very open emotionally. Yeah. And it's just different temperaments. More guys, some guys are more sensitive than others. And Men do get, we do get into the sort of withholding thing. Yeah. You know, rigidity and withholding. And, and that's probably because I'm too intense, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm like coming on too strong for the kid. <laughs> too intense. No, like, cause sometimes I'm, if I'm too worried uh, and I'll be like, what's up? You um, right? Da -da 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 -da. Maybe that's his way of sort of keeping his locus of control inside yeah. of himself, you know, but I don't know. Again, I think it's temperament more than anything. I really do. I think you're right. Ooh, talk about withholding. Tell me that. Um, like, how was his potty training? <laughs> oh, easy. Okay. Dude, he like, uh, he took a shit himself one day at two and a half. He's like, I'm going to use the toilet. And then he just took a shit and then we never looked back. Uh, withholding is just a way of having control. Oh, yeah. 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 It's such a fine dance with men and women. It, and I think that a lot of this new agey hoo-ha, I don't know, man. I don't I, get I it. I think like, it's all great if it doesn't abandon what is real and true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, we can, guess what? As men, guess what? We can be better. We could be better. Yeah. Yes, we could. And thank you. We, we need some guidance on that. And where we fall short, we're, we're happy for it. To so say we're not worthwhile, we're worthless, we're whatever. Jesus. And you, you should see millennial males have been. Psh, yeah, they're just they're, totally fucked up. They're just they? told they're not. And guess what? They're not dating. They're not having relationships. Yeah. And the women are like, what? what? What's going on? They're like, what? you hate us. Why would we. Subject ourselves to that. Or how do I even approach a girl if I'm a, a yeah. younger... And, and By the way, and you hate me, and I'm worth, not worthwhile, and I'm Oy. all these horrible things. And if I express some desire towards you, uh, I'm going to get accused of something. That's Especially the, that's if the we've real had a thing. couple glasses of wine. Now what do we yeah, do? Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's bad for them. Yeah. That's really, this really made me sad that the men out there were like, see, this is why we don't... I knew it, you know? This you, is didn't why. you didn't... You didn't... Because I, I remember that call when it happened. I no, thought, I, at it? first I go... She go I, so first I thought she was joking. When oh, she's no. like, I have a pity party. Oh, and no. I was like... And then I got really sad because I was like, but wait a minute. If he's your partner and he's... Oh, if he... If a man trusts you enough to open up... Like, let's say... I'm not saying like some... If it's a guy you're on the second date with and he's doing pity party on not, the second date, that's yeah. a red flag. Yeah, not But good. that's for anybody, man or yeah. woman. Yep. But if you're in a committed relationship with somebody... And and he's opening up to you and telling you that he's afraid or whatever. Like that's that means he trusts you with yeah. his heart, with his with his soul. Yeah. Because that's very rare for men to do for a woman. And if she's going to shit on that, then she's a fucking crazy person. That's not nice. Happens a lot. It's not a bad. It's a bad woman. Happens a lot when when you put your stuff on, a, on another a woman. They they don't like it. They you, it's just listen. They can learn to be okay with it. That's the thing. And, and she, rather than her describing that in such sort of matter of fact glib ways, she should have gone. Jeez, how weird. I how do I, yeah. can I do better? I I noticed it affects my sexual desire of all things. I what's wrong with me? And you, I would literally have said nothing's wrong with you. You're wired up that way. But here's what you can do. You right, know? and also because I think in marriage or in any committed relationship, like you said, there's cycles where one of you will carry the other for a minute. Correct. You guys take turns carrying yes. each other. Well, but, but back That's to maturity, your maturity though. Top, uh, Does not take time. Like yeah, you know, you're also people don't talk about the fact that you you know one thing that long-term couples do is they build a life and they build a family these yeah. are things that have to be built over time and you value them and you appreciate them and you appreciate the other person's participation yes. in it this is back to the workaholism stuff and that's part of that for periods of time yeah it, it's really just geez if i hadn't done it I don't want to th but know. then if you hadn't done it then maybe you and your family wouldn't be as financially stable and oh, now you wouldn't be You'd anything. be in a whole different world of shit. And then she'd resent you for that. That. Yep. Why didn't you set us up? I was taking home, I taking care of the kids, and what the fuck were you doing? So you're, you're fucked if you do, you're fucked if you don't. <laughs> when we get to that point, we hate it, but it doesn't have to be that way. That's what Wait, we're saying. It doesn't say, have to be that way. Say, what do you mean? When you get men to the point where you're, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, 
that's the worst place for us. Yeah. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to be that way. We have to f- make sure that we don't put men in that position. That's all. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's where most of the millennial men are right now. And, that and sucks. I, I, they, need to, they need to, listen, we have instincts. And we have sort of genuine parts of ourselves, and part of it is biology and part of it's environment. We need to in, 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 like, like soak ourselves in that. You know what I mean? We need to go with our instincts and things and let them express themselves through a prism of, you know, of understanding that we don't want to hurt other people and affect other people, but let our instincts sort of emerge. It's, an, it's a, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, and, and, and also there is a dance that happens you, when you learn boundaries with women, you have to you have to fumble. You have to ask people out and be rejected. And well, this is another thing that people dance. are losing track of. Yeah. So you and I like doing that. We like. Yeah. To, yeah. You were in the search for the perfect Peter, as I recall, and you, and you even found it. You even found it. You even found it. And so. I don't know why you settled for something else, perfect but pecker. you found the perfect pecker. I did. Pecker. I found well, the perfect pecker was attached to the uh, to the emotionally unstable sociopath. Guy. Sociopath. Guy. Yeah. Live in the Redland Skate Park, pussy. <laughs> no, and um, and also too, like when I say, uh, it's funny because I don't when I say pussy when I make fun of it's like, I'm talking about resilience. I'm not talking about masculinity. You know what I'm saying? When I call somebody a pussy, I think it's weakness is like you didn't get up and try it again. You're a pussy, not because you've feelings right you can get you can cry wipe your fucking tears and do it again you know what i mean yes. and then you're not a pussy yes so i think it's just interesting like what is a pussy <laughs> I, I, i'm serious because welcome to right Lens skate park pussy it's a very interesting thing it, to what it's a th- this is welcome to redland skate park oh, pussy. Oh. Redland skate park pussy it's this little boy and he's on a skateboard and he's just so tough and resilient and I love that quality. I love that. I like masculinity. I think it I think it is being poo pooed. It's too sad. It's sad. That's to you liking sociopaths again. That's a young yeah. sociopath in training. <laughs> That's what that is. So just you know, we gotta be careful with you, honey. So Well it's true. I, <laughs> Why do you I, like me? I am non sociopathic. I don't like sociopaths. I have I've had to I've had to soften, yes. I've had to feminize myself, accept femininity. That's been my my journey because I actually was more masculine and doing stand up and I hated being a girl and I'm non binary and I'm transitioning now with this testosterone therapy I'm finally gonna get rid of these breasts. Oh, uh, it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna grow a penis now. Um, but you know what I mean. Like I've actually had to be more good with okay with feelings. So I've had to do this journey that these guys you, are so like. Do you think you had? To. And, and you, I I don't experience any of this now with you, but I think about your history and your mom and your dad. And all sure, that sure, stuff. sure, 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 sure. Did you have any borderline traits at one time? In yeah, your, okay. because I was raised by one. Yeah, so so yeah. that's that's what that's where the sociopath thing comes in. Borderlines love sociopaths. Yeah, that's and, why I like so. that stuff. <laughs> That and, like psychotic resilience. I'm really stuff. glad you got out of that. <laughs> so yeah, because it wouldn't it, if you really were borderline. Tom wouldn't make sense. It, it, it no, doesn't, yeah. he's not a sociopath. Not at all. And so no. it wouldn't it wouldn't even be. Would he have been interesting to you when you were back on your more borderline? I process? that's when I met him when I when was you're borderline. when I I wasn't borderline. No, no, I don't mean you had a disorder. I mean borderline. Cause Susan had traits, borderline stuff too. Traits because yeah. I was raised by one. So when I first got into therapy, it, it, I had to learn it. Hang on a second. Hang on like, a second. Oh. Everybody understand what we're talking about. This I this is really important to me. Traits are not disorders. That's right. Everybody has traits, and I was responding to the stuff that the traits that. Uh, Christina was attracted to it suggested that she at that time had some traits that yeah. were creating some of those attractions but but I'm just saying and do not think pejoratively about all traits traits yeah, or yeah, even even disorders because they have evolutionary purposes you know they they just in certain circumstances they become a liability the way I always say it is hey if you need a fighter pilot you want a narcissist yeah. you want somebody who feels indestructible all the time uh, but if you want to be in a relationship with somebody, that may be a little bit tough. Yeah, so. or even a surgeon. I I yeah, spoke at thing. this hospital that the the surgeon who did my ankle, and I was like, bro, you got like you cut into people for a living. Mm-hmm. They pay you to cut bones. Like under normal yeah. circumstances, you would be a psychopath. Like, <laughs> but they're paying you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's good that you channeled that into something more productive. Yes, right? yes. I mean, Jesus Christ. Well, again, there's healthy yeah. narcissism. 
Yeah. Just but like I there's think, healthy borderline even. Because some of the, yeah. you know why? Because borderlines are super sensitive. Super mm. sensitive. Yeah. No. But I, I trained myself to like the opposite of what I liked. So when I met Tom, Tom wasn't what I liked, but what I needed. And I mm. knew that. And mm. I was like, okay, I don't have like a crazy thing with you, but there's something about you that I need and I need to go And, and d- does that to help people understand how that does transition to wanting and needing, you know, as you get yeah. closer. Yeah. Because that's people don't make that transition very often. No, because yeah. I, but I had had enough boyfriends where I was like, oh dear, I seem to be uh, hooking up with these guys that are not doing me any favors. Yeah. I'm in this constant tumultuous place. Yeah. What? And I met Tom, and I, none of that tumultuousness was happening, and yeah. I was like, oh, I think this is good. Yeah, I think this is calm and good, and I need to. I'm but, afraid. I'm terrified, but I'm going to stay. So people are they, they're afraid of that when they're, yeah. when they're attracted to something else, and it feels weird and uncomfortable to them. Yeah, and that makes yeah. them leave. It makes them get yes. out. Yes. Yeah. But, but if for you me, can get I through want, it, if yeah. you can get through it, then you find real connection. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, I need to get into therapy and straighten my shit out because yeah. I want to keep this guy because I think I really like him. I yeah. want to fucking scare him off and stuff. So there you go. Well, it makes me sad that dudes don't want to share their feelings. That's fucking bummer But do they want to? That's another question. Um, do they really want? Because listen, when men hang out with men, I asked Tommy, I'm like, do you like, never talk about feelings. That's what I'm saying. Ever. So like, maybe it's they don't laughable. want to. Yeah. <laughs> it's comical. So like, do guys even want to share feelings? When like, they're in trouble. When they're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. And even then they might hide it. But if they're willing to share it with you, that's, they're that's, in trouble. That's a privilege they're, they're, to yes, hear it. Yes, you need your help. They need help. They need help. If they're if a man gives you his feelings, they're in big trouble. If they're like, I mean, we're not that we, you know, when I was in therapy, I had to learn to really identify feelings. I wasn't yeah, well, me too. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. not well connected. We still to do. Them. Nadav has the picture chart when we take pictures. Happy, sad, confused, because comedians are like, "Wait, what? What's an ex- well, what's an emotion?" <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised by that because your mom. I I, uh, I was because listen, I was hyper focused on other people's feelings. Yeah, I could yeah, I could yeah. the slightest movement in your eye muscle, and I yeah. would, I would be all over it. Yeah. But in myself, I, I empty connection. Like, it wasn't quite there yet. Took a while. That's terrible. Where are we taking ourselves today? This has been a we're like Tony it. Hawk. We're romping. I love we're, Tony yeah. Hawk. Well, that's so that's. But, yeah. it, it is. It is. Uh, it's, it's, it's we crazy. we should be very very grateful that we've had the look. How much if you if you can have gratitude, anybody can have gratitude. You're in good shape. That's the one thing I know. And so for you and I, I mean, we've had these extraordinary experiences. We yeah. have great kids. We have yeah. great spouses. We've had a lot of therapy. Yeah. We've been able to afford the therapy. We do these. I'm in, actually in denial about, because, you know, when I was, um, you know, seeing 60 patients a day. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, I Seriously? would get up at 5.30 in the morning and I'd come home at 10 at night and at least four or five of those were full consults and things. Yeah. Oh, no, I would see. It That's was insane. Terrible. Insane. And so I would do it for 14, 16 hours a day. That's what it took to do. I mean, it'd be, you know, four people you know, three four people an hour i would do just all day and um versus talking on a microphone I know. <laughs> it's such a distance yeah. that i can't believe that i have the opportunity to just talk on a microphone and yeah. sort of give it all back that way that is weird to me i i like in, i'm in a constant state of denial about it because it it's one was work i mean that was freaking work all you know to the point where i was exhausted every day now I get to talk on a microphone to somebody I like. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, it's so crazy it's to me. And then I can beautiful. still make a difference through it. And it just, I'm so grateful for that. So Yeah, grateful. me too. And because I think, I think a lot of, I think what's important is to provide some roadmap for somebody listening who's fucked up right now. And who's like, how do I? Don't have to be fucked up. It's everybody. I know. We're all fucked up right now. This was part That's of the problem. so true. And, and you and I have been younger and fucked up and pretty much everybody around us was younger and fucked up, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a common thing to have to have stuff as you develop and get things through. And unfortunately, you know, we, we live in a time where we've been doing a pretty decent job of addressing the mental health part, but nothing on the spiritual side lately. Been, yeah, it's because, well, we've replaced God now with what? Uh, any, anything. Binary, non-binary <laughs> yeah. bullshit. Right. And yeah. We've replaced the God. Listen, this is not a new theme. Throughout human life, 
there's it's been God and then God gets taken out and then science comes in, religion comes back and then it gets replaced with something else. And now we're in this new age of like gender, blah, 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 or whatever fucking horse shit's going to replace God. It's like the it's constant. rational revolution yeah. needs to be a rational revolution. But, but that's I tell the thing, you. people. You, there needs to be something. I don't know. There I is, can't we're figure moving, it we're out. We're moving in the right direction. You, we you promised me we would, and we haven't. <laughs> and I didn't believe you because I kept asking move. when, 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 and we're sort of moving move in the right Texas. direction. Move to Texas. And we're, you don't think about it as much now, right? Move to it's Texas. Way better here. A thousand percent. Yeah. I think California, as much as I love it, it's my home. Eight one eight till I die. To quote Brody <laughs> Stevens. I think culturally, it's too too crazy. The coasts are out of their fucking minds right now. Yeah. Real talk. I love you guys, but the left went way gnarly. Not too crazy, man. There needs to be a middle. Yeah. There needs to be, and just personal response. Take care of your own shit. Join us back Who in the middle. fucking in, cares? In, in Buy the, a the gun. The radical middle. Buy a gun. <laughs> Shoot stuff. <laughs> Eat barbecue. Fuck. Name your kids normal fucking names. Start there, okay? Wow, you've become that person. You become Yo, that Texan. You know what's so funny, you dude? You become that Texan. A hundred percent. I'm I'm writing my next hour, and I was like, I I, I was in my ladies' book club yesterday, and I was I was sitting at this table of these beautiful women, these older like they're all decades older than me, and at a beautiful luncheon, We're talking about books, talking about Megan and Harry, talking about like this one woman has a ranch. She says, I I have books on my ranch, and I have. Uh, whatever the fuck she has on her donkeys, and and I was like, "What is this life? Who am I? Who have Where I? Am I?" Yeah, that that's a Talking Heads song, you know. Yes. Yeah, is this my house? Is this my beautiful <laughs> wife? What are the days what is this go place? by? Let the water hold me down. But then my most important part of the day is picking up my kid from school. You know, that's the that's the that's the change in me. And you go like, "Whoa, that's that's massive compared to my my parents." You know what I mean? Like, if that's the biggest, I did it, is what I'm trying to say. And they couldn't even do that, like, have peace to look forward to picking up the kid, you know? Yeah, they were not well. They were not well. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like progress that way. Just take take care of your own Massive shit. Massive progress. Well, take care of your own you know, what shit, is, what is Ken, What does uh, Voltaire say at the end uh, of Candida? Uh, what is the closing quote, Miss Philosopher? He said, Candida grows in the vagina. No, it does. And you get yeast Gardnerella infections. Gardnerella is there, too. Garlic uh, in your pussy. But speaking of Gardnerella uh, and, and f- vaginal flora and the garden that yeah. grows there, what he says at the end of Candide, I never is, read Candide is we must take care of our own gardens. I Yeah. Just cultivate your garden. Don't worry about it. Don't just, worry about no just, one else's shit, homie. Just cultivate your garden. I like that line of like, eh, you know, look out for your community. It's not Bruyard or whatever that. Baudrillard. Baudrillard or whatever that asshole. That French fuck. You know, some people, I, there was a big Twitter fight yesterday about Foucault and oh, uh, Chaussure ruined, and all those he guys. He ruined philosophy. They, they, but the French don't have any, and, they, they have nothing, no time for those philosophers. They are 75 years old. The French left them behind 50 years ago I and know. we're preoccupied with them. I like Zizek though, that Slovakian. Czechoslovakian he goes to speech impediment and, and he says I'm a trans woman <laughs> he's very funny he's like I'm trans I like my own toilet he's he's against you know against any ideology that's his whole thing is but, he a woman? no Slo- Slovaj Slo- Slovaj Zizek he's Slovenian Slovenian philosopher I've heard of Zizek I've definitely yeah. heard of him he's, he's pretty he looks funny like, uh, it looks like it looks like Bert Kreischer yeah, <laughs> on, he on a bad day <laughs> his wife was a smoke show though he, he fucking hooked it up but uh, he's against everything, which I love. He's a pretty uh, funny guy. So interesting. Pretty interesting. Well, so um, you brought me here to talk about other things. So, you have it me. I've been rambling on No, here. are you kidding? You've been fantastic. So number one, I saw a TikTok. Do we have, I'm sure we don't have it on deck, where the yogurt and the maxi pad. Do we play what? that yet? On your mom's house. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You've got to see this. I'm sorry, I sprung this on you last minute. I did not prep this. I thought I, just I was the only one it. that did that to, to knit off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> put yogurt in his panties? No, no. Ask him for videos from. I know. <laughs> it would take like, him three hours to what? find. There's this TikTok I sent you guys. I think we play, We did play on your mom's house, but I don't know if it's aired yet. I think I saw. It's heard about so it. fucking gross. This girl's like, women, if you're feeling hot down there, just do this. And she takes yogurt and scoops it and puts it in her maxi pad. And then she's like, just put this on. And I'm like, that can't be right. That can't it's, it's, be right. It's like, uh, what's, what's, what's it called where they, we take the bacteria? It's, uh, 
it's a way of trying to establish with it. People have advocated things like that. I know. I've heard yeah. it before too. It's not the yeah. first time. But I'm yeah. wondering medically, like, is uh, it does not sound like a great plan. <laughs> There's plenty of sugar in there too. That, uh, right. It's that's, that's not going to go so well. Because <laughs> that's a that's a pretty sensitive area. Like yeah. it's a self cleaning it's a, it's, oven. It's a it's. It's a self-cleaning yeah, oven. Yeah, you don't it need to, a, don't do nothing, It is man. an ecosystem. And uh -huh. you do something ecosystem, it shifts. Yeah. Don't put yogurt in and your And it cooch. can take a while to come back, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's a, it's a self-cleaning oven. And if you use the, what's the oven cleaner called? Oh, yeah, uh, self-cleaning yeah. oven, it's all fucked Fuck up. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. Just let your, just, no, dude, go to your gynecologist. Go with medicine first. Um, okay, and then I also... Are you sure, could you find it? Should we pause for you? Yeah, let's pause. Give me, yeah, give me a I'll minute. I'll go pee. I'll be right back. Christina, why do uh, why do women then ask men to open up if that's not what they actually okay. want? Okay, because I think women, we want you to be like chicks. We want you Except to- Except you don't. Hold on, right. Yeah. We want you to, you guys are rolling on this, right? We want you to, we want to connect with you the way that we do our girlfriends and our mothers and everyone else in our lives. So then we get upset, like, well, why can't you just talk and think the way I do? Like, my way is the better way. Why don't you just talk like me and be like me? And then you do, and it's not attractive. This is what, true. Now that's the part where men get very, very confused. So why is, why would you want something? We're very, you know, I know. When we want something, it's because we find it attractive. That's it. And we're still attracted to it when we get it. I mean, why would you want something that then turns you off quite literally? I think because, and I'm trying to, honestly, this is, this doesn't apply in my current, I'm trying to think back to when I was in my twenties yeah. and I was like this Yes, and because it is an immature female trait, it is not a mature woman's, I think it's that's a girl's true. I, trait. I think that's true. And you've noticed yeah. that caller that sparked all this was younger. She's a girl. Yeah. She's not a woman. A mm -hmm. woman understands that men and women are humans with wide ranges of emotions and whatever. So yeah. as a girl, I'm trying to think back to the super sensitive ones I did date. Because I did, I was, I wasn't a sensitive feeling, guys. The problem was, is that it was too much for me. Yes. And it leaks into it was too needy, too much. Well, so let's let's look at it. All, you know, when, too everything, feminine. Everything too in, feminine. That's right. So everything in humans and in biology generally, you can sort of ask the question: What would be the evolutionary reason for that? Why would women have evolved in such a way that they would even demand that from a man? Demand which the demand masculine? the feelings to open up, even though it, it would cause them to not like them. Is it? Is it to know what the man might be? They feel like the man's hiding something and they're trying to get at the information so they can yeah. develop strategies to sort of keep the man? <laughs> or, right, right. Or is it to push the male away in some, in some way? Is there I some impulse there? women communicate verbally. This yes. is our primary yes. way. Women are verbal. So if you're not verbal, yeah. right, if you're not <laughs> verbal back, it can signify trouble. So you need to be, you were just looking for reassurance then. Possibly. <sighs> Possibly. And then we reassure That's what I found. It, it yeah. It's like being asked to open up. It's either at that moment I'm either, either not thinking anything in particular <laughs> or if I do open up, it's not exactly what they want to hear. <laughs> they want to hear something that reaffirms what they're thinking. Yeah. But they I, might Chad's get upset of what, what I actually am feeling at that moment. Chad's got it. That that's on to something there because you're really what you're really doing is going. Are we okay? Are, are we okay? okay? Are we are okay? We, are is we this okay? union okay? safe? Am I safe with you? Am I stable with you? Why don't you just ask that? Uh, it looks weak. So what do we care? It's unattractive no, to you. To it's us, it doesn't even register. Do, do you love me, John? Do you I think it's a little well, whiny is one thing. Whiny gets a little tough. Do you love but me to, anymore? But to go, how gross is that? Does that to, make your dick shrink or what? Do you I, love me? I tell anymore? you what makes the dicks grow is go. I, I miss having sex with you. I worry we're not having a, a connection the way we should. You'd be in bed in two seconds. I know. That's all. I know. We're very simple. We need to connect. We, I feel like we're, we're disconnected. Very simple. We're very simple. Just bring it back to the penis. <laughs> we're fine. We're, 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 dick touches. <laughs> dick touches. You know what's so funny? I, I'm glad you found that yoga. We'll play it in a second. Is that I read this book because I found it on TikTok. This Ukrainian girl and her mother. She's like, my mother is always right. And she reads the rules. It's like this, and the rules. Have you heard of this book? From way back when? Yeah. And she, the, the, I read the rules of marriage because I was like, my mom 
is the same way. Eastern European women are trained this fucking book. I'm telling you, it's that book. The rules, yeah. No, this was a very. This was a, a no, the old. Rules. This was from like the 80s, I think. Yes, and and but I'm yeah. saying that Eastern European women are trained. This is how Eastern and, European and women this, are raised. This right now, if you brought that into a institute of higher learning in this country, I think oh, somebody would murder, burned, murder yeah. you. I think. It's, However, I will say I I gave it a glean, and I was like, check, yeah. Uh huh. Right. So, like, first one of them was like, "Sex is on the man's schedule. Give your husband sex when he wants it." And I was like, "Yeah, if, yeah. If if you would like yeah. him to be happy and right. stay connected to him, that's all he fucking uh, needs. Uh, otherwise, bro. he will start to get weird and brood and get unhappy. Exactly. So, what's and, and wrong with that? What's I, wrong I, with fucking him when he but wants to? They fuck? go, "Oh, I don't, what if I don't want to? Or it's my body?" Or blah, blah blah blah. Okay, that's true. It is all you, and and you're gonna have an irritable guy on your Good hands. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. If all he needs is to get his dick milked, have a fucking sandwich, a coke, and a smile, and watch the football game, that's all mm-hmm. you have to do, and you can't fucking do that. You shouldn't be married. What does that book say about burping and farting? Oh, that's probably verboten. <laughs> what does it say about putting yogurt in your panties? Let's see the clip. This, this I'm going to do today. You have Let me to tell s- you something. Whoa! Yes, that yogurt <laughs> right here will definitely help you. You just pack that on that pad. Make sure you got a nice long one right there. And does she have to pick listen. something that look that like on, you know, that look like pus? Yellow, yellow yogurt down there. Is that gnarly? So what do you think? I mean, it's, it sounds reasonable, right? Again, why does she have to choose the yellow green yogurt? I know. It's a, it's just it looks like, so fucking. She must. It must be a joke. But whatever. Um, people have talked to. No, I, I've heard I, about I'm, this. No, I'm hoping that this woman is making a joke of of, of what you've heard of. Okay. I you know hope what I'm so saying? Too. I'm hoping because otherwise, <laughs> this just looks like a yeast infection waiting to happen <laughs> and a UTI also. Well, and, and a hell of a mess and a hell of a laundry bill. Yeah, and like, where is this maxi pad from India? Like, what the fuck designs? <laughs> no, They're not. That? They generally don't have like ink on them. What is that? <laughs> on where your vagina goes? Is that hearts around the border? I mean, no. I'm telling you, it looks like an Indian like pattern, hen- like a henna, henna pattern. Yeah, yeah, like what the it fuck does. maxi pad company is this? Wow. You should not pr- print like ink yeah, on where curlies, your vagina is. Curly yeah. cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of them. Oh my goodness! They look like stray pubes it's, in the pad. It's, it's so uh, gross. God, dude. I, like, I have to say, like, <laughs> there's this whole culture now of like radical period acceptance. Uh, that's kind. Of, we've come back from that a little bit. Didn't <sighs> we used to watch videos of women pushing period blood on their face? Yeah, and, stuff? and there's this one gnarly yeah. bitch who's like, "I got my period the day of Burning Man, but that doesn't stop me." And she's wearing like her bikini with her maxi pad, like showing like see-through bikini bottoms or whatever. And you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. She's like, sometimes I free bleed at the beach. And it just shows her sitting on her towel, bleeding through her swimsuit. And you're like, bitch, you're nasty. Nobody wants to see your nasty period. Like you're fucking nasty. I'm all for acceptance and talking about period, but like. Bless her heart. Don't be gross. Yeah. Bless her heart. Bless her That's heart. That's what they say in the side. You know, I confirm with Ian Ugh. Edwards, Jamaican men don't dig the bleeding. Really, and they will not put their mouth where a place that has had bleeding. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's a Jamaican a thing. thing. Yeah, and I had heard that from some Jamaican friends, and I was like, I'm just confirming. He wasn't sure if it's still that vehement as it was in the 90s. Well, but uh, I don't blame you. I mean, like honestly, I've seen all the stuff that comes out of there, and you guys I, are brave to put your mouth on it. I wouldn't fucking put my mouth on a vag. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. You know what's Stuff interesting? That comes out of there. What I find interesting is no, I, I got to talk. I've tried it's sort of probing my gay friends about this a little bit. A lot of my gay friends have massive vagina, like not phobia, but a ver- aversion. Yes, I know. Like aversion. And, and I'm like, that's so curious. I, I No, it's not. Because, okay, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> I'm friend, like, I have a really good gay friend that I've had since college or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's because gay men know straight women so well because yes. we tell them everything yes so we're we'll just tell them like tampon oh, stuff badge I think stuff they, i think they started with a version though well, yeah and then, and then they sort of play with that by talking to you about all this <laughs> stuff and grossing themselves out they hate girls it's so funny i mean they love they, girls they, but the fit my physicality repulses my gay friend isn't that something yeah i love I, it i think and then i, I started <laughs> <Makes me> laugh. <laughs> i'm like ew what would you do <laughs> 
if I just sat on your face. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, ugh. I think it's so funny to have a man be like, ugh. Yeah, it is funny, isn't it? it? But but we, but to be fair, uh, men, straight men have that feeling when they think about gay men having sex. Dicks, they have a similar yeah. kind of, Not dicks. Dicks but and butts. The, having the, no, no. The dicks having grinding the sex, into each other. Having the sex part. And, and or oral sex with men, it's just it's just like it it hits the same zone as like seeing your parents have sex. Ah! It goes to that same zone, yeah, doesn't it? Kind of the same kind of just a version. Think about it, I like, uh. But what always makes me laugh with male comedians is um, when they play with their fear of homosexual eroticism. Yeah. Like I love it when my husband will be like, I don't know, I'm just hanging out with dudes right now. We're just hanging out. We're just doing dude things. Or like Louis C.K.'s aversion to dicks makes me laugh so hard when he's like, What if I just I just licked a dick out. And like, you know, like his just, I love when straight guys play with that. Play with the yeah, fear of I think, it. I think it's, it's really healthy. Great. I think yeah. it's healthy. It also diminishes that same, that feeling that we have that some people think is some sort of um, bias or something. It's, I, I don't know. Maybe it is, but I like, I like that we can play with it. Vaginas are just so much more grody and complicated. They're complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's and tough uh, for you guys. and they're inside, and they're mysterious, <sighs> and they have a whole ecosystem, as we said. And bleeding happens, and babies oh, come out of there. It's... And and some men get really freaked out after they've seen a vaginal delivery. Oh, I know. That's We've when emails. they yeah, they're like, no, no more, can't go down there no more. I know. I've been traumatized, which is weird to me. Yeah, but what do you, what's that all about when they get traumatized? They get traumatized. They 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 can't handle it. They and just they can't go back to they being think sexual. about that every time. Yeah, I Again, don't know. What, what was what was God's plan? Some of the, some of the things that that we've evolved with that we manifest. I just think what 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 is the, what is the what was nature's plan? What was God's plan with that? <laughs> was just have plan? fewer babies or move on to the next creature or. Well, what I, I find interesting is that your baby comes out so not formed and not ready. Oh, that's the, the it's insane that humanity exists. I know. Imagine in sort of you know a, a ancient era. Trying to a have a baby impossible. Three quarters of the women must have died. So yeah. why would you do that? A think about how powerful the the, er, the drive is to have a baby that yeah. you die over it. Yeah. A B how could you possibly get enough resources and safety to get it through infancy? How could you do that? How the brain is yeah. not even formed. It can't stand up and walk for two well a year. But, and but a half. that's the the child's part. It's crazy. How how if you're just trying to scrape together some water and mammoth meat. How what? do you, how do you, and the, plus the pathogens that are out there. Oh. And the, I mean, just forget it. You can't even wash your hands. There's no soap. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no fucking soap. There's no water. Yeah, no <laughs> water. You get an ear infection, deaf. You get a urinary infection, <laughs> kidney failure. Done. So sex, yeah. just, you know, oh, you, yeah. get, you get, you, you get, you get chlamydia, you get PID, you're dead. Fucking done. So, so that's where, by the way, I've always said this, that's where a lot of the in, injunctions against sexuality, like, parents why do parents urge kids not to have sex because for all of humanity even a uti could kill you yeah it would just be like you know no, you know how you knew how powerful the urge was as an adolescent and you knew what the consequences could be you'd be like no no babies no no infections no can't die and then <laughs> and then as an adult suddenly they become willing to risk it so <laughs> fucking hey man oh so i wanted to have one more discussion with you i'm yeah. sure you must be exhausted no. but Okay, fun. good. Okay, good. Um, is there are voicemails or anything we can listen to. Too? Yeah, but I want to tell you what I did to my hormone stuff. Oh, good. Can we talk about this? So, so yes. this is for all my perimenopausal bitches out there. Can, Hot can topic. I, can, can I frame it that my profession has been woefully inadequate in terms of paying attention to and managing perimenopause and menopause? Yes. Women in perimenopause, which often begins in the mid 30s. Really? Care associated with mood disturbances, sleep disturbances, well-being, all, all skin problems, it's just one thing after another. Mm. And we as a profession immediately put you on antidepressants or something, which right. is not what you need. Happened to my wife, I watched it happen to her. She was so pissed when she finally got to the right hormonal therapies, which was 20 years later. Oh wow. And she'd been having it forever, different person on the hormones and different feelings about herself and you know engagement in life and things and it'll be everything's better yeah. and it's safe you can do it safely in good hands there are yeah. people out there who know how to do this and we don't even measure necessarily those things we just put you on an antidepressant yeah think how sexist that is i know well yeah it's just yeah. So so basically you started after meow, the, meow. Yeah, like like yes and yes. I, I'm not I'm not familiar enough with your 
profession to, to speak on it. So I, I'll just I will tell you from my... I speak on all doctors' behalf yeah. and just say we've not done a good job. Yeah, not, we're well, getting there. Male, we're starting to. Yeah. It's There's just plenty of women. The, women do it too. The women, female physicians do it too. Oh, well, let me it's tell just, you that. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. so, so it started with the after the birth of my first child. I was 38 or 39 when I had Ellis. And then immediately I noticed my hormones were out of whack. So that I got on. Also pro, happens a lot. Yeah. So I got on like progesterone. Did you breastfeed? Yeah. Yeah. I got on that makes it worse. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And but but then I was like, oh, I'm just feel off. And after the second kid, it was just like, what the fuck, dude? So now I'm on Lexapro and everything. Anyway, I was having night sweats, and you told me you're like, that's not normal. <laughs> And I'm like, what? Um, yeah, what does it mean when you drench the bed and the mattress <laughs> I know, every night? I know. Literally, I would wake up shivering, and I, like when I go pee, and I'm like, oh, I'm just soaked. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> anyway, after like you know a couple of years of suffering here, I finally had my blood work done. How long have I been telling you to do that? I know, like since LA, since I lived in LA. <laughs> But but what instead what they do is they go just take more Lexapro. It's a mood disorder. I know. I know. But women, listen. The perimenopause can start like what age is perimenopause? You said mid thirties. Mid thirties. So it's it's not. I think you know you talk about menopause, but you don't talk about that cool decade or so leading up to it, which yes. you can manage and treat. So I'm telling yes, you, or as a, two decades leading up. And oh by my the way, life. and if you sort of get on a plan, you can continue to you manage can, it yes. as it becomes more intense. You can intense. regulate yourself yeah. so that you're not suffering. So I yeah. advise you, if you're a woman listening to this and you're 33, I guess, and up even. If you're, if you've, look, we don't, we also don't pay attention to women's hormonal shifts after pregnancy and after breastfeeding. Talk to your doctors about this. Insist that they pay serious attention, not to your mental health, to your biological endocrine health, your, that's, your that's hormones. That's it, endocrine. So, so here's what I did. Because I was so curious about this change in my my life, this yeah. is this is going to be the next phase. So I want to like really educate myself. I made an appointment with an endocrinologist, a gynecologist, and then I had a doctor who gives you supplements and takes your blood draw and like gives you specific hormones. The gynecologist wanted to put me on. Blew you off. No, oh. she was nice, but she she wanted to put me on a birth control pill. That's one way of doing it. It's not nearly so effective. That's something they do in the younger women. Right, because she's like. But didn't even check my estrogen or progesterone, or your testosterone, which or they anything. Fucking yeah. never test, <laughs> they which never is test. which is it's one of the key hormones. Your ovaries are your main producer of testosterone. Women have lots of testosterone, not you know maybe fifth or so as much as men, but they need it, and their ovaries produce it. When the ovaries start shutting down, they don't produce as much testosterone. Right. So she wanted to put me on this pill that would take away my period totally, and then just keep my my levels like this. Seasonal. Yeah, something like that, or Heather, or some yeah, shit. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds depressing, because I don't think I've ever felt good being on the pill, ever. Okay. I don't think anyone feels great on the pill. By the way, high-dose progesterone is in these things, typically, and that's a, some women do respond to that, most feel worse on that. Well, so you got to be really careful with this. you gotta, also, you got to kind of get the estrogen in there also. And, but if I'm all... Okay, so then that's yeah. why so I go to the endocrinologist, they look at blood work, and then she wants to put me on... A, some kind of a birth control pill as well, this but, a, hor the but a progesterone only and take away my period totally. Yeah, yeah. See, see that you would not have felt good with no, that. No, I at know. All. So then I did this specific, this blood work doctor, and they look at everything and they're like, well, you're not making progesterone anymore, but you have estrogen. So we'll give you some progesterone. Some. A little testosterone. Not a whole fuck of yeah, a like, yeah. So like the I'm, when I'm advising anybody listening, it's don't necessarily just pump stuff into your own body. It, but like it, most doctors are not trained in this. I, yeah. I'm not at all surprised the endocrinologists and the and the gynecologists did what they said they were going to do. That's not wrong, but it it is. It's just like a blanket. It's thing. a little controversial because the Women's Health Initiative suggested that estrogen is the enemy and dangerous and right because of breast cancer stuff, breast cancer. right? And there's the, look if you take the progesterone, the endometrial cancer risk goes away. And there's growing evidence that if you take the testosterone, the estrogen has less problems associated mm. with it. So you have to you have to balance the it's the balance really that is necessary. Not that you just take a whole bunch of progesterone and you'll feel better. No, you won't. No. So no. I advise anybody if if you can get your blood work done and have somebody like yeah. look at what the hell is really and, and, happening and in see your body. If, see, there there are physicians that are specifically expert in this area. And also, I know you guys are like, yeah, but Christina, you sit on a toilet that cleans your own ass. You can afford this stuff. It wasn't an arm and a leg. Honestly, it's not unreasonable. 
These drugs are, I think, are very reasonable. Yep. You can get a three month supply for like a hundred bucks. And there's different ways whatever. of doing it too. If you start to get into the bioidentical uh, pellets that they put under your skin and stuff, that starts to get expensive. Yeah, I'm on. And I'm you, done. But that you don't yet. have to do that. There's many, many other ways of doing it. Yeah, but just don't don't settle. If you go to your gynae and she just throws you <laughs> the birth control, right. you're like, but then I'm just gonna feel shitty and, and, all and the time. To be now. fair, some women do feel better on that, oh, and you can well. give it a try if you want, and that's an easy move. But it's not. It's not. It's not going to be the long term fix. That's for sure. And it's not going to. It's not as likely to work as just getting that balance right for you. The balance is what yeah. it is. Finding yeah. the tweaks. Get specific. And, and, and t- testosterone is overlooked, and it's so important for the ladies. It's just well, so important. Uh, here's my issue: is that you might as well go go hot. I already wild. have a guy. Yeah, I've already got gone. a dick. It's fine. Yeah. I didn't care anyway. She's like. <laughs> <clears throat> Will I get a dick? Yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. It's fine. I'm halfway there. I'm really not a good lady to begin with. But uh, I asked the lady, the doctor who whatever prescribed for me, I'm like, I'm afraid of taking testosterone. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm just going to tell you, like, what will you I of? grow a dick and balls? Well, let's talk about it. Okay. What did she tell you? She's like, well. Well, a dick, but not balls. A dick, but not. <laughs> how big a dick do you want? So there, there can be clitoral enlargement with it. Which is not a bad happen. thing. It's easier target. And it's easy, easier for us to find it. Uh, number one. Uh, number two, uh, irritability. So when we get kind of uh, aggressive, they, that's they not abnormal for me. <laughs> already? You, you know, it's so funny. I told Susan the same thing. You were already aggressive. I'm already a psycho, it. yeah. So, so I think women that are already aggressive probably doesn't change anything. I'm um, pretty comfortable and, with that. And the partners that are used to that and cool with it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, and then some, you get some hair loss in a male pattern. Fuck that. that. The minute happen. that shit happens, I'm done with testosterone. And you can get hair growth. And Fuck that, that. I'm no, out. No, no, but that's all, it's all it's laser or whatever. It all takes, gets taken care of. It's, I'll be off that shit so fast if I lose my hair. Talk to Susan Pinsky. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, not everybody does. Did you, was your dad bald? No. Yeah, so don't worry about it. He's gorgeous. Yeah, don't worry about it. His feathers were flying. Is he feathering it? Oh, feathering it, brother. I saw a TikTok. Was was that her TikTok that I saw with the uh, sheep shears? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. How about that dude feathering it? So rad. That was rad. I he looked American, but that would not surprise it, it me. Just, if they were the Russian. whole thing, the whole thing just spoke Scotland to me. Like a <laughs> r- wool sweater, the, the shears, <laughs> the cloudy skies, like a like a you know, Dutch painting. Uh, let's do some follow voicemails right. and then we'll we'll say goodbye. Okay. I gotta go my go home. I gotta go to LA tomorrow. Hey Marty, oh. this is Matt, the pool guy. Sweet. I have the uh, childhood trauma for you. Matt, the pool guy. My dad told me that if I swallowed gum, swallowed chewing gum, chewing it would gums. come out of my nipples. <laughs> so, of course, one time I accidentally swallowed some chewing gum and uh, worried for days after that that it was going to come out of my nipples. <laughs> Kept checking. Obviously, it never did. Um, so, yeah, I was very traumatized. And... Of course, now I tell my kids the same thing. So ah, smart. Got to pass that trauma down. The gum either. Pass the trauma really down. Funny. <laughs> well, I don't like it when my children, well, my older boy only chews gum because I'm like, you're running, you're going to choke yeah, on that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, if you really need a he behavior. Goes, eh. Well, I'm just thinking if you really need a behavior to stop, God. it's okay to. Uh, your kids don't, a lot of people chew, chew gum. I've yet to I see an aspirated gum that, you know. Okay. Uh, I've seen aspirated beans that people eat and stuff. You know what I mean? I've seen all kinds of other weird stuff. And gum, not so much. Uh, I'm sure it's happened. but uh, uh, And so this passing of trauma is interesting, though. When you when you happen to, you, of course, pass it right down to somebody it. else. It's so I know. Crazy. It's kind of wild to watch your kid <clears throat> grow into you. Mm. And you're just like, whoa, I'm fucked up. <laughs> now you're <laughs> fucked up, too, the same way. This is awesome. But I love it because I can parent it. You know, I'm like, all right, I know exactly what's going on in your brain right now. Can't change it, but you know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. You're sort of scaring me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like good psychotic. It's like, it's it's whatever. It is what it is. It's entertaining because I I've dealt with it. Is what I'm saying. I yeah, turned I know, it into I something it. positive. No, and I get so, it. And, so but it, but it is so fascinating to me how trauma always gets passed down. Always. Because I fucked my dad. I hate him. He always told me gum would cut my nipples. So I told my kids the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> And that was for your show and not mine. That's so weird. I know. Uh, it's interesting. It's a male. Did Give you have fun trauma? Um, by fun trauma, I mean like 
you walked in on your mom getting out of the shower and she had a bright red bush and for the rest no. of your life you thought of that bright red bush. No, 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 no. Just like severe ones, only serious. Yeah, only really yeah, like gotcha. psychological. Gotcha. Never mind. Abuse. You gotcha. Know, emotional abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psych- yeah. Financial abuse. <laughs> <laughs> just, just really worked on me. Cool. All right, let's do another follow <laughs> Hi, mommies. This is Rhiannon from Texas. I am sitting in line for school pickup for my kiddo and going through the mail that I picked up at my mailbox. Um, I know Christina has a pure, sheer, joyful admiration for um, specific takes on modeling. So I wanted to share, I got my Victoria's Secret holiday model or holiday card in the mail with, like, coupons and stuff like that. So we have an assortment of models in uh, in this article now, including one that you would love to Google. Um, the newest model has a prosthetic leg in the advertisement. Fuck. So just thought I'd share. I saw it, opened it, and immediately hey. thought of... And Victoria's uh, Secret? Take on, you um, know... Uh, the new trend in modeling. Fuck. Okay. Well, for men Happy who like... Thanks. Thank hey, you. Men who like looking at models, the the... The leg thing wouldn't bother us at all. Is that her? No, because like the rest of her's hot, guys. Yeah, they'd be fine. They'd be like, whatever. Like, here's the deal. I'm okay with the prosthetic leg as long as the other leg is hot and like looks good in a bikini. Yeah, 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 there it is. That's fine. Dude, she's hot. Like, as long as the rest of her makes sense to be in a Victoria's Secret catalog. So so you've been railing on models that aren't models, essentially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm over it. I'm over this idea of being in the upside down. Yes. That up is down and down is up and fat is hot and, and it's okay to be fat and fat is healthy. No, it's not. It's Your doctor is being overweight healthy. It, they get away with that because there's something called the obesity uh, paradox. And the obesity paradox, look up the obesity paradox while you're at it. Now let's see if it can come up in a little like brief a little there it is in the obesity paradox <laughs> go to the, go to the click on that yeah here oh, it is the obesity paradox refers to the evidence showing that obesity in older subjects or in patients with severe chronic diseases may be protective and associated Stop. with decreased mortality what so what what well it, it's i think it's basically that when you're so old upset. you don't want to be debilitated thin and frail right to have some weight on it, even to be obese is actually better than being frail i think is what that but do you make to. it to being old if well, you're that's obese? The, the, i think that's the issue and it's never really been properly settled because if you're getting here's here's one of the mistakes people with obesity don't have cholesterol problems people always go they're Stop. cholesterol problems they tend to have low cholesterol why i don't know they do number two they can or may not have blood pressure problems they sometimes don't have any blood pressure problems. Sometimes run a little low, which is weird, but many times don't. And the obesity can be terrible for that. I've noticed that some people's bodies reach a point where they get a certain degree of obesity, and then boom, the body goes, fuck this, get hypertension, get hyperglycemia, sure, all this stuff. Too much. Um, now, the diabetes risk is, of course, of course, you outstrip your body's ability to produce enough insulin to deal with all that adipose tissue, and you get type 2 diabetes. That, of course, happens. And that is very dangerous. How are they not having high cholesterol? That is... It's a separate thing. It's a separate deal. A lot of play, I have high cholesterol. So do I. Yeah, we're skinny. We're thin. We're, you know... Thank you for calling skinny. <laughs> I've been working on it. Um, that's fucking wild, dog. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, I wanted to say one thing. Uh, my friend Olga, I named my raccoon after Olga, my Ukrainian oh. friend in Kiev. She's in Vietnam. Shout out to Olga in Vietnam. And she and I correspond each you know, Wait, tell me more about her. I love her. Where'd she's she come she's from? a mother of two. She's from Kiev. How'd you know her? Through the show. She, she was she one was of an early listener and I just and developed. Did you help her get out or anything? Or I tried. You, you sort of chronicled tried. her, her she, what's she doing in Vietnam? Well, to get out of Kiev because there's still bombing. Everyone went to like Czech Republic, I thought. No. Or, or Germany. It's a long story. She has okay. a husband who's uh, also his, his work is contingent okay. on Okay, okay. Right, so there's a reason for it. Okay. So she's there. She likes it. She said it's very positive. Oh. And she's like, you would be very pleased to know in Vietnam, they absolutely fat shame you. (laughs) And she goes, when you go to the doctor, they weigh you and then they chastise you if you're overweight. Asian cultures generally don't fuck around. No, they don't. (laughs) There's zero fucking around. With with much, with education, with health. 
They they are like, let's get it done here. Let's get it right. Yeah. Meanwhile, America, all we do is fuck. And by the way, they may my some of my favorite patients are I've got this family I take care of, they're Cambodians there. I love them. And uh and they want like they want it on. I'm like, I'm happy to provide it. Let's do it. <laughs> let's let's I'll be all over it. Let's go. Yeah. And uh they're great patients for that reason because they respond to everything. They, they do it. Back, they do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had this great doctor in Hawaii. My kid got um, an ear an earache, of course, on New Year's Eve. So I had to find a physician on the island. And this sweet Taiwanese guy comes. He's like, oh, I wasn't doing anything. I was just came back from a skiing trip. Boy, did I gain weight. And he pats his, tum- his stomach. But he's like, real? <laughs> that, that skinny doctor thin that you guys are? And I was like, yeah, fat ass. Good job, chunky. I mean, he was great. He looked fine, but... He said it was a big fat zone. I really appreciate that. Well, that's nice when they say things like that. Okay, good. Okay. Wait, there Is was there something any... else I wanted to tell you about about <laughs> doctoring, and now it's goddamn. My brain doesn't always you're, stay. With you're in menopause. Do it, men it, get it, in menopause? No, but we have lower testosterone. Low as we T. Age. Low T. Well, I was talking about this with Weinshank last time. Is that now as I'm getting older, my ideal man, like let's say Tom drops dead tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I'm a widow. And that's I'm, an interesting exercise to do, isn't it? I love doing you know, what this. What would I do if you're my wife was there? What I would love I, this. How would that work? <laughs> so I love this. And I was like, my ideals have changed for what yes, I find attractive. Correct. So I'm like, okay, who would I marry? And, and yet what's weird is, <laughs> but hang on a second, correct me for this, if you're having this experience too, you're still as attractive as ever to the spouse you've chosen. I love them. But yeah. you wouldn't choose that again necessarily. No, I would. But here's I'm seeing, I want like, it's like Tom 10 years from now. Okay, right. hear me out. Right. When he's mellowed out, because I love men in like mid fifties that get that low T action going. Yes, a low T king is Sarah Women do Weinshank. tend to like that because they're more like their female friends. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're gay friends and even. We are mature enough. The women are mature enough to appreciate that. Your in estrogen the male is partner. down. You're not worried about reproducing anymore, so you're not in that competitive mode for the for the limited resource of the male or protecting so the, the youngins. The male has a whole different meaning to, to you. A hundred, now it's a companion. Mm-hmm. You just want a companion, so you start thinking like. Well, who's that going to be in a decade? Maybe Tom will get into yoga <laughs> and he'll, he'll have been in therapy for like two get a decade. So he's going to be really in touch with his feelings. You just, just want to be a lesbian is what you're saying. I totally want to be a lesbian. I wish I liked pussy. If only Damn. I could eat pussy. <laughs> it's not so and bad. I am not I'm, interested. I can coach you up. I hate it. The thought oh. of a woman's vagina. You're a gay man is the problem. Yeah. I know. I know. But anyway, that's my a low T a low T guy. Mid, it is like interesting. 50s, yeah, it, I've noticed divorced. That, yeah, a, a lot of women start to have lesbian relationships later in life too. When the guy guys, because that they're just looking for companionship. No. <laughs> my, my friend, my mom friends, and I talk about that. Yeah. We're like, maybe we should just all live on a commune together. <laughs> so much happier. We don't want to have sex anyways. There's, you know what I mean. You get to an age where you're like, testosterone's going to bring you back. Care. You're going to be all back. Don't worry no, about but it. I do. I like to fuck. Here's the thing. Hot tip. I'm really into Tom. Mm. I'm re- I f- physiologically yeah. Yeah. so that, responsive to my, like. That's a good sign. It's like, uh, it just fits. Yeah, I, yeah. Same, I, same with Susan and I. Yeah. yeah, that's why when he, at, like, he, I, I whenever, feel bad when people don't have that. I know. Because it's so nice. Because like whenever he wants to bang, I'm like, yeah, 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 let's go. Like I, it's mm-hmm. seldom a no, unless yeah. I'm right about to get my period. Yeah. Like fuck right off. But yeah, I like banging him. I'm very attracted to him. And like on a pheromonal, like, like his smells. Yeah. I just, I well, like his good. smell. All right. I got to let you go. I got to go home too. I got to go to LA tomorrow for Botox and filler. It's, it's been a times. year. It's been a year. Oh, well, that's good. You don't need it. What are you laughing now, at? Let me talk to you about this. I've got this droopy eyelid skin. See this? Oh yeah. And I went to the, the doc and they're like, yeah, you're going to have to do that when you're 50. Okay. Just I know. Tell me what to I do. I know the person. Oh. The person. But so, I'm asking, but should I even do that? Is it Because I've heard you get one good facelift. You get this is one, not a facelift. This isn't a facelift. This is just this, that. This is eyelid removal. This is, they just Skin. take out that extra. Should I wait until it gets droopier or do it now? Uh, you're not ready yet, but but it's <laughs> it's a it, it actually can affect your vision. It starts to. Imp- I know yeah. a droopy dog. Yeah. My dad had it too. It's yeah. It's, it is sort of a Susan had it and had it repaired. And oh, it looks um, good on her. Yeah, you don't even know. It, it's just what she was thought it was time and she did it. And the ophthalmologist agreed. We have a guy that just trained an eyelid. He's he's a very talented ophthalmologist, but his expertise was eyelid. Is he Asian? Years and years of eyelid, no. Oh, I only trust Asians. Uh, I understand that, but I think this is the guy you want to do it still. I do. What's his ethnicity? He's he's a white guy. I don't think it would be. But I, I, but I think whites. you would, I think you would, I know, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I feel you. Is he American? 
I don't I th- trust white Americans. At least Pollock. I think this guy would. I think this guy would garner <laughs> your trust. I, think. I don't care what anybody is. <laughs> as long as he doesn't have like those stupid pronouns under his signature. Mm, I don't think so. He's like they, them, she, him. Like no, you're not. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck. Shut the fuck right. It, up. it all started in the universities, right? It's all academia. It did. That's this, the th- this, this was taught as a as a, literally my philosophy. I had a postmodernism teacher, and he's like, "Okay, I'm going to teach you this stuff. It's a joke. It's it's not even taken it seriously." It came directly from the postmodernists. You've got to be no, no, yeah. fucking. I'll tell me. you, I had a professor. Which one? Uh, Chaucer. Yeah, it starts with uh, Derrida. Derrida and Chaucer were literally joking. I know. They were literally a joke. <laughs> oh, and then like Luce Irigere, then these feminists get really nutty. And then, yeah, it, it kind of starts around that time. In the margins, marginalized community and da, 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 and then meta narratives and all this weird decentralized, decentered. There is no, you know, yeah, oh. postmodernism. We were taught as a joke and then it became gospel in this country which is really the rest weird. of the world is laughing about it well of course yeah, yeah but we'll talk about that later listen i love you uh oh uh leave me a voicemail 213-375-5184 where my mom's at at gmail.com you know let me know what kind of yogurt you're putting into your maxi pads is it strawberry it maxi pad what if you soak your your tampon <laughs> in it wouldn't that be a little more efficient that's a great idea yeah yeah dr drew is telling you to soak your tampon in, uh, it's, it has just to be, kidding. We're just to, kidding. Needs to be Greek yogurt, sugar-free. Greek, yeah. Greek yogurt. I don't want. To <laughs> so fucking gross. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show. And anytime, I, I miss you. you. We got to do more of this. You just kind of hang out. It's it's like again, I'm in denial that I get to do this. I know. And it, it's it's a great it's a job. <laughs> what it's is crazy. this we're doing? It's ridiculous. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Love you, man. I love you, bros. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to this uh, show, this channel, so that it just drops automatically and you don't have to think about whether or not you've heard it and seen it. Um, Yeah, so I'll see you next time. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.